Hear our Father. You know, there's nothing more important in life today than hearing from our Heavenly Father. So today we're going to start this going directly when he came down and he was with Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. And he gave us a message that Isaiah passed on and that Christ would repeat and Paul would repeat. And it means it's for now. So hear our Father. Chapter 6, the great book of Isaiah, a word of wisdom from our Father. And verse 1 of Isaiah chapter 6 reads, In the year that King Isaiah died, and I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne. Saw what? Saw the Father right there high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. In other words, here old Uzziah, dying of leprosy, doesn't even compare to the king you're going to see in verse 5. Verse 2, Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face in humbleness, and with twain he covered his feet humbly, and with twain he did fly. He held his position. 3, And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Don't ever forget that. I don't care how bad things get. I don't care how bad things look. Our Father is still on that throne. And guess what? His elect feel him. They have his protection. They have his uh, uh, honor and glory and duty that his elect are supposed to do. He communicates. Well, how does he communicate? Well, he speaks, and you need to listen. That's called hearing the word of the Lord. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. The very foundations that that threshold stood upon shook uh, when he spoke. Uh, Then said I, Woe is me. For I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. That is the King. That is our eternal King. That is the King that will never have leprosy. That is the King that will never weaken. It is our Father. But here, this has to do with degradation of the people, and how the mass majority never pays any attention to our Father, nor even tries to listen. And even sometimes when they try to listen, they listen without understanding. Verse 6, Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. This live coal of fire is right from the altar of God. Verse 7, And he held it, and he laid it, rather, upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. The fire of God purges your sins away. That's what he is uh, so forgiving of, is that on repentance, it's just washed away. You have a clean start. Now, And one thing I want you to know, does the fire from the altar of God harm you? Does it burn? And absolutely not. Our Father is a consuming fire, and like father, like child. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit that touches and leads and guides, strengthens, and lets you know when you're on the right track. And certainly, you don't have to wait long to find out if you're on the wrong. Verse 8. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, here am I, send me. Now Isaiah is kind of, this is not his major role. It's really the role of the messenger. And that's why Christ will repeat it. It is the messenger of God's elect, which will be mentioned in this same chapter, verse 9. And he said, Go and tell the people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Now, this word here is shama in the Hebrew tongue. Do you know what it means? 
It means to hear with intelligence. It doesn't mean to hear and it just passes over your head. It doesn't mean anything. It's to hear with understanding and intelligence to understand the simplicity in which God teaches. It doesn't just fly over your head. It makes common sense to you. Why? Because you have listened with intelligence. That is to say, concerning God's plan, the order of the day, the order in, and, and, uh, in which things will come to pass, prophecy and so forth, until it falls in place for you, and you can see with understanding. You said, but you've got a majority out there. They don't know. Come here from Sikkim. They are too busy. You could talk to them all day long. They will have no idea what you're talking about in the, just when you get into the simple terms of, of God's plan for, of salvation. And uh, some, some oversimplify it. Some don't touch it. Some won't plow. Some won't understand from the beginning to the end, which you must before you're going to ever understand the Word of God, is God's overall plan. <clears throat> so what he wants is those that will... He said, most of them are just not going to hear. Should that be discouraging to you? No, he told you beforehand. They're not going to hear you. But that does not change the fact that you have the remnant that must continue with that truth. That's why he touched his lips. That's why he purged him. That's why he gave them the truth, so that there is hope. You see, this generation was long ago, and this truth had to come forward even to this generation, the generation of the fig tree. And um, so, and he, he, and he said, go to this people that understand. Ten, make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. In other words, they try to move in and they can't make it, and God would have to heal. Then they're responsible, otherwise they're innocent and ignorant. So, verse 11, then said I, Lord, how long? That's the question that I guess all ask, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. He said, I'm going to let them destroy themselves. I'm, as far as spiritual discernment is concerned, I'm going to let the population take their own selves out. What does it mean? There's no man, there's nobody there with understanding. And so it goes down through the years, and when you look around you today at the problems of this world and how few people you can actually have an intelligent conversation with concerning God's Word. Many people are intelligent. They're, they're high-tech, well-educated, but spiritually, they're biblically just, I mean, they have nothing, basically, no understanding. God told us that long ago. There's no great mystery there. But he, this is what he's saying. In this, I'm going to just let them go from generation to generation until they just take themselves out. Uh, basically, as far as truth is concerned, understand. Verse 12. And the Lord, and the Lord hath removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Now, I want you to hold with me. Most people still stick with people. The subject now is land, okay? Mark it well. We're talking about land, uh, 13. But yet in it, in what? The land. In it shall be a tenth. A tenth of what? Not people. This will throw you off if you're not careful. A tenth of the land. And it shall return and shall be eaten as a teal tree, and as an oak whose substance, that's its stability, is in them when they cast their leaves. What's the subject? So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Now, in a tenth of the land, there is still that plot that is set aside. Do you know what the thing, you know why he mentions an oak and a teal? Because you can cut them down, and guess what? the sapling pops right back out. 
And so it is with God's elect. Down generation to generation, the holy seed keep popping out. And that truth continues going on. Those that shama, that hear intelligently, that is to say, hear with understanding in the simplicity in which Almighty God teaches with that fire right direct from the altar of God through the Holy Spirit, uh, that truth prevails. Though many people might be confused, you always have that substance. And that substance is hearing, Shema, hearing Almighty God. That is to say, to know what he's talking about. How precious it is that our Father always forewarns us, that he lets us know, hey, things are really going to get tough as far as true spiritual teaching is concerned as true spiritual leading. Most of the world, they're going, to, they're going to just take themselves out Why? through traditions of men. Uh, people will listen to traditions of men and call it holy. But it could end you up right in Satan's camp. And that's what's important in this generation. And that's why he keeps that line of those saplings that would come forth from that tenth of the land that is protected by Almighty God, that those saplings and teal saplings come forth, that, and that word is taught, that truth continues on. From where? From the altar of God, right direct off the fire, the fire of truth uh, that enlightens your soul and brings you into the light, and you never, never walk in darkness. How precious it is that God leads us. Now, this is brought up to date for us. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, you're all familiar with it. <clears throat> it has to do with sowing seed. And the seed is what? It's the Word of God. The very word of God itself that um, that keeps um, that truth flowing and um, and lets us know and understand His word. Pick it up with uh, you, uh, let, let's just summarize a little bit. He shows the picture of a man broadcasting seed, but he says that seed is really the truth. It's the word of God going out, and he picks up where we left off from Isaiah. In verse 9, let's go there. Verse 9, Matthew chapter 13. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Hear what? Hear the word of God. Has he touched you? And the disciples came and said unto him, I mean, there was a great multitude there. Now, this is the disciples, his students. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. There being the reason. And the reason carries forth from Isaiah 6. If they want to deceive themselves, then let them deceive themselves. For, verse 12, For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance, but whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. In other words, if you get off in the traditions of men, if you want to deceive yourself, have a good trip. You're going to get so far off. Listen, you've heard me use this until it's almost sickening. You don't have to study God's Word. You're going to be gone. That makes void the whole Word of God, basically, the warnings. And you simply shoot yourself right out of the saddle, where you don't have a prayer of a chance. Because how could you hear God's word if you don't listen to him and you listen to some man instead? You're in a heap of hurt. Verse 13, and, and listen, the further you get off, the more he'll take away from you. If he gives you a truth, you'd better share it, or you'll never receive another one. Verse 13, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand, not with intelligence, they just don't get it. 
verse 14, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, that's Isaiah, which saith, by hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. There's no way you can see the depth and the simplicity in which Christ teaches. You know, that is really a sad, sad thing, where if people would simply put aside all traditions of man and pick up the Word of God and hear Him, listen to Him, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. I thank God this is the reason our growth is so astronomical, and it is. It's because it's God's Word. And you know something? Those are waking up... Um, that are in that tent, they listen, and they hear with understanding. They're coming around, and how precious it is. It has to do with this generation, the generation of the fig tree. Verse 15, For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. In other words, they would try to come on back in, try to convert. 16, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. It's real simple, then, to understand the blessings of Almighty God. All you have to do is listen to Him with understanding and hear what He has to say, not man. Verse 17, For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. Many prophets of old wanted to see who was standing before them at that time and had not seen him nor heard him, but they had seen him, the true king, king of kings and lord of lords, and heard, heard him speak and teach in the simplistic way of which he does here in reiterating and bringing forth to this generation the teachings of Isaiah. But was it Isaiah's teachings? No, it was the teachings directly from the altar of Almighty God, hear him. Verse 18, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. I'm going to make it easy for you, he's saying. Hear with understanding. 19, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catches the way that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth the seed by the wayside. He didn't. He heard, didn't mean anything to him, had no depth. Verse 20, But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, he heard it, and announced instantly, with joy received it. I see it, I see it, I see it. Have you ever really shared a truth with somebody and they just lit up like fire and the next day they're gone? That's what we're talking about here. No root, no depth, and quite frankly, they weren't chosen. Verse 21, Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of what? Because of the Word. The Word of God will cause uh, many problems. But that's good. It brings many more blessings than it brings problems. And by and by he is offended. Just as quickly as he received it, he's gone. You will all have experienced that in your sharing and planting seeds. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world, the care of this world age, translate it properly, this age. And the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. If you don't produce fruit, what good are you? 
And, and that doesn't mean that everybody's supposed to be a teacher of God's Word, but a, a liver and a sharer thereof. One soul converted in your entire lifetime, the angels in heaven rejoice. It's that big a deal. It's well worth the trip. 23, but he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. It doesn't matter how much, you're blessed. And, and we don't play favorites about who's blessed the most. Why? Well, God gets the credit for all of it anyway. But there, we could continue on. We're not going to because you're all so familiar with it. He goes then into the, the parable of the tares. He tells you about Satan coming. He plants the wicked seed among the children of God. And... The devil himself, as you would read past the 35th verse of that 13th chapter, is the one that planted them. And they are wicked, and they are evil. They're Kenites. And when you hear that simplicity and know that, it puts you on guard. And by that, you know where the faults, who the false Christ appears to. That's knowledge. When you hear that word, it gives you understanding and depth whereby you cannot be deceived. No matter what Satan tries, he's not going to deceive you. He cannot have you. You're one of God's elect. You're part of that shoot, that sprout, that comes forth even in troubled times and stands for something that stands for Almighty God and His truth. Turn with me to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 32. You know what has happened here? Let me bring it up to date in case you soon forget. I mean, here Pentecost Day came along. That's the 50th day. And both sons and daughters began to speak in a language that needed no interpreter. It was every language in the world because it wasn't them speaking. It was the Holy Spirit, which was a type of of the end times when God the elect are delivered up before the false Messiah, where you're not to premeditate what you say, but allow the Holy Spirit to deliver it at that time. They continue talking to Peter in this 32nd verse following that wonderful experience of Pentecost, okay? That is to say, not a known tongue, but a tongue that everybody knew. Verse 32. This Jesus um, hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. We saw him. Verse 33. This is Peter speaking, incidentally. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he hath shed forth this which you now see and hear. And you hear with understanding. This is also God's elect speaking. All those children that spoke, both sons and daughters, in that Pentecost clarity message. God's Word with clarity. 34, for David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord saith unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand. Psalms 110, which gave the prophecy itself. Until, 35, I make thy foes thy footstool. Now, that's where Christ is going to stay until his enemies are made his footstool. Who do you think he uses to put them there? God's elect, when they witness against the false Messiah. That's God's chosen ones. That doesn't make them real special. It makes them someone who cares about truth and hearing truth somebody who cares about serving the living God instead of the traditions of men. 
36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. That kind of means, boy, are you in for it. You crucified him, and he's the judge. That's, that's bad news for somebody. Okay. 37, Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, they should have been, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? We're in trouble. 38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent! and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, even you. 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Just how many does he call? Well, he kind of let you know, didn't he, back in Isaiah chapter 6 those that are supposed to hear, those that are supposed to know the parable, those that God touches. I think it said there that God calls. Calls why? He knows he can trust them. He knows he can depend on them. They're not a puff of smoke. There's stability. There's substance. There's something there. There's a child of God. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Why? They're going to take themselves down. You don't want to be a part of it. 41, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added to them about 3,000 souls. Join the church. You know, this is a sign of movement. And you know, when you begin receiving anywhere from three to seven to some days even as many as 1,400 new people a day, that's growth. Who does it? We sure don't. The Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, the fire, right from the altar of God. Hear our Father. Hear His Word. Follow His Word. Be that sapling that comes forth, even in troublesome times, and bears fruit. The Epistles of John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. I'm going to go again all the way back to the beginning. First Epistle of John, chapter 1, verse 1. Chapter 1, verse 1. This, who is the, who's this writer of the Epistle of John? Well, it's St. John. It's the apostle that Jesus loved. It's the one he held very dear. You know, God used him tremendously. He wrote the book St. John. He wrote all three of these Epistles of John. And God used him to bring forth the whole book of Revelation. So he's quite a servant that God can use. You know why? He hears Shama, the word of God with intelligence, with simple understanding of God's word. Chapter 1, verse 1, first epistle of, of John. That which was from the beginning, I mean coming out the gate, which we have heard, we did what? We heard it. We heard it how? With understanding, with intelligence, which we have seen with our eyes. We can witness it, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Hold that word dear, my friend. It's it's your strength. It's your uh, plan of the day. It's your action. It's where God's blessings come from. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. We witnessed it, and that word became flesh and walked among us. That while that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also 
may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the, with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. That, that is to say, Yahshua's Savior, Christos, the Anointed One. For, and these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. I don't know, is it? This is how joy comes. Is knowing tomorrow. You know, man only fears what he doesn't know. And when God lets you know what tomorrow brings, you can make plans. You'll handle it. By this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Don't ever get in the darkness. Why? That means you're not quite understanding. That means you're not really taking the time to see the simplicity in which God teaches. Be careful, my friend. When the shadows come, clear them up, for God is light. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Analyze yourself and, and keep in that light always. Uh, seven, but... If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Now, now understand this. You want truth? You go walking away into traditions of men, the light shut off. You're, you're in for trouble. You're not going to understand. Well, I just like to hear men, exp you know, extravagate. You know what that means? I don't. <laughs> I don't know what they talk about. It doesn't make sense to me. But our Father's Word does. That's what's important. You understand? Listen to Him. And you know what it means? The Holy Spirit walks with you. When you, when you are so undecided on something, it seems like that answer won't come through to you. Don't go somewhere else look and stick with God's Word and pray about it and bam, like a bolt of light. That truth will come to you whereby you can teach it and expand upon it by the presence of the Holy. That's fellowship with the Holy Spirit. No big deal. It's just honestly walking with Him, period. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another. I think we got that. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And it does. Eight, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. I don't think anybody can live in these flesh bodies and live in these times and you're, you're going to fall short every once in a while, so what, well, what do you do? You repent. That's the beauty of Christianity, is forgiveness. And um, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful. He's what? He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. We, you know, when, when you're in this world, there's a lot of sin. Just keep, rise above it, repent when it gets taint shut, and know that God forgives. He knows we are weak. He knows we have faults. And that's why he sent the Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He showed us how to do it perfectly. And, and, and following him as best we can. Uh, you're going you're gonna, to, but see, what happens when you follow him? We're just going to have it so nice it'll be like living in a rose garden. Don't kid yourself. They crucified him, okay? They slammed him. They cursed him. That's what truth, that's how truth affects uh, ignorance in this world. And that's the way it is. Big deal? Not, not big deal at all. Sail your ship, keep it off the rocks, and God will always bless you. By what? Hearing and seeing 
the Word of God. That is, that is the stability, that is the salt of the earth in flesh bodies as you go forward. In closing, if you were to continue on, it would say you are in sin. It means a, a habitual sinner. You're not that, okay? An habitual sinner is somebody that just don't care about God. And that's who it switches to, and it confuses a lot of people. Different subject, different time. Now, in closing, one more scripture. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. If you only had faith, you could move mountains of a mustard seed. If you only had faith of mustard seed, you could move a mulberry tree right into the ocean. How does it all come together? Romans 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. Shama. That's hearing with intelligence, hearing with understanding. And hearing by what? By the Word of God. And don't you ever forget it. That's where it comes from. Don't ever let anyone rob you of that chapter by chapter, verse by verse. You keep in that Word. You stay in that Word. That Word is you. For it's your family, your fellowship with the Lord God Himself. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy. In other words, the word went out. They didn't hear it. So you come down to that point where you have to make a decision that you're going to hear what God has to say, and listen to me clear clearly. If some man makes some great speech and can't back it up with Scripture, you better go the other direction. Okay. Why? Because it's not the Word of God. And I'm talking about people. I'm talking about people that claim to be spiritual teachers of God's Word. If they do not teach God's Word, you're in a heap of hurt. Why? But did you not understand today? He said. If you don't, if you share away, if you pull away from me, I'm going to take what you got and give it to somebody else. He meant it, and he will. When you see somebody start going off track, they're a little bit off track here, and the next time you talk to them, they're so far out in the boonies. What God pulled away what they had, he'll do it. He's jealous. What? He wants you to hear his word. Not this man or any other man without documenting that word in the word of God. The word, as the first epistle of John is written, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. It's his voice, his instructions. And when you follow his instructions, he blesses you. It doesn't get any better than that. The blessings of the living God, wherever you are, strengthening you, lifting you, but most of all, making you helpful to mankind. That is so ever important. That's what it's all about. You know, we're going to have it easy in the eternity, but he expects you to earn it now in hearing his word and carrying that word forth. It continues on in that first chapter of the great epistle of John that I just quoted, verse 1, that the Word became flesh and walked among us. He let us know that he also could come down, could live in a flesh body, and get it done. You know what? You're in a flesh body, and you're getting it done. You keep it up. You're doing real good. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the Word. Let us help us hear that word, Father, with understanding, with intelligence, Father. 
for it is your will that we wish to do. Touch. And we thank you, Father, for the growth in this ministry, Father, knowing your hand is there. And we just ask your blessings, Father, to continue. Lead us, guide us.